Hey, welcome. If this is your first time here, I am so glad that you're here for this episode. In this episode, I've got McLean and Aaron from Hello Tomorrow, and we're talking on storytelling, everything that you might want to know on how to tell an authentic and real story. So let's dive right in. Welcome. Uh, I am super excited for today's episode. I have McLean from Hello Tomorrow. Dude, thank you for being here. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm doing all right. Yeah, things are good. Life's good. Um, Yeah, can't complain. Happy to be here. Dude, I am happy that you're here. Um, Now, you guys are in Canada, right? We're in Canada. Yeah, we're in Vancouver, so west coast of Canada. Nice. I've yeah. never been. I can only imagine. Like, is it cold right now? How is the weather? How is... It's not too bad. The weather, like, I don't know. It's Celsius. It's about seven degrees Celsius, which is, you know, a handful of degrees above freezing. Um, and <laughs> oh it's gosh. not bad at all. This is pretty normal for here. Uh, East Coast Canada has it really rough. They're, they're the classic, you know, should be living in igloos type. But uh, here, things are pretty good. And yeah, we live in a a pretty wonderful spot. Uh, so yeah, we're big, big fans of uh, where we live. Dude, I love that. That's awesome. And um, <laughs> do you mind telling just us and like, who, how did you guys get started um, with Hello yeah. Tomorrow? I know you guys have been doing this for a while, which is amazing. Um, and just a little background of who you like, the brand really is. Cool, man. Yeah. So yeah, uh, my wife and I uh, started this in 2006. So it has been a minute. Uh, we were dating at the time. Um, I actually started it kind of on my own. My um, I was always into video and my uh, my sister was getting married and I had just graduated high school. And I was like, this seems like maybe getting a videographer like my sister has. Uh, that could be a cool job. So I kind of just dove right into it. At first, it was kind of an excuse just to get cool gear. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, sure. (laughs) I'm going to film some weddings, but I really want this camera so I can really create, you know, skate videos and stuff. Um, And then, uh, and then, yeah, that was 2006, late 2006. And then throughout till around 2008, we were starting to get a name for ourselves around Vancouver. Just, you know, video was still on the up and up for weddings. And uh, we and a handful of others were kind of pushing that locally here. And then um, I was able to go to film school in Vancouver here in 2008, yeah, late 2008, and uh, did a year program there. And that was really cool. And that coming out of that is where I really wanted to revamp our business and decided to focus uh, entirely on making story driven stuff because I learned so much about story in film school. And I really wanted to kind of apply that mindset into wedding films because at the time it was even more so than it can be now um, was so focused on just like sizzle reels and music video type looks Mm. like literally it was like slap a song, throw some cool slow-mo B rolls, some terrible Dutch angles and, (laughs) and you're good to go. Um, So we decided, yeah, let's revamp the business. Uh, And that was, yeah, late 2009. And then, yeah, basically 2010 till now has been full-time, both of us um, pushing hello tomorrow and trying to create better wedding films. Dude, I love that. And so I love that you guys are working together, Aaron and yourself. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. I love husband and wife teams. <laughs> I'm very biased because we are a husband and wife team. Yeah, uh, you so get it. It's super, it's super awesome. Uh, it comes with the struggles, but it's I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, Great. And with that, like I like talking about story. Um, mm. You mentioned that uh, in just introducing yourself. This is basically the whole podcast. It's just like about story, and um, I love we're, it. we're just gonna we're gonna dive right in into what. First of all, what is story? Because like I look at a bunch of filmmakers and a bunch of videographers, uh, and like making this amazing content, right? Like on Facebook, they'll post the content. And it's like incredible imagery, but afterwards, it's done. Like right. that was it, right? So when I think of story, I think of like something that really captures my emotion yeah right and like something that just uh, it like pulls me in even if it's not like super awesome but something because i could be watching somebody on their phone like a a phone clip that's like 
that's super interesting, but there's emotion, there's things that are happening, things that are pulling me in. And to me, I value that a lot more than having just amazing footage. Like, don't get me wrong. 100%. I love amazing footage. But there's something to the story that will never and can never get old. So can you just give us, what, is, what does that mean? Like, what does story mean to you? Yeah, story is kind of a, a loaded word because like in our industry and the filmmaking industry as a whole really likes to just say that word. Everyone has heard story is king, but you asking that question, but what is story to me is interesting because a whole lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, it's you're chronologically following something or it's a series of events and it's, you know, has to do more with time than it does with just a montage or something. And that to me isn't quite it. Um, story is a lot bigger than that. There's so many facets of it. Um, but ultimately I think it comes down to making someone care. Um, why when you're watching, you know, a cool wedding film, you, yeah, like you said, you can have so much beautiful footage and that is a, a very important part of what we do. But if the person doesn't care, the person watching doesn't care, then what's it all for? It's going to, it's not going to last in their minds. It's not right. going to last as a important thing for them to watch. And that's just speaking to the couple. Even if you're able to make strangers care about a stranger's wedding film, that's pretty powerful stuff. And that is kind of at the, that's at the top, I would say of the, uh, or the, it's like the gateway to storytelling. Right. Like it's, it's an important part. Uh, there's so much that makes up story, but that is a, a crucial element. I would say making people care. Yeah. I love that. And, um, another question f within all of this is, it, it is obviously super important, but for you, I want to know what inspired you guys to create better stories. Great question. I think coming out of film school where I like everyone, film school is a loaded question in and of itself. I had a really good <laughs> right. experience because the technical stuff can all be learned online. That's fine. Even at that time, it was pretty common. Um, but what I was able to do is take a year of my life and really focus in on visual storytelling and learning about screenwriting in fictional movies. Um, so I just realized I was going on a rant and I think I forgot your exact question. Could you repeat it? <laughs> <laughs> what is, no, that's fine. What inspired oh, right. you guys? Inspired yeah. What inspired you uh, to create better story? Right. Okay. So yeah, learning all that stuff in film school, was I was I was just so excited by the idea of how can I apply to the apply this to documentary work or wedding work? How can I make apply these you know the three act structure, rising action, falling action, and side ends, and all the like the principles of storytelling that you hear in screenwriting? How can I apply that to something where, especially with the wedding, you know the ending, you know the couple are ending up together, so that's that is an added tricky element. Um, you don't have the benefit of a surprise ending, being able to, right. you know, trick the audience into, uh, you know, subvert expectations. And you have um, a similar-ish subject for every film you're doing. It, they're all, it's people getting married. So how can you add those storytelling principles and tell a more engaging and interesting story um, or just apply those principles at all to a wedding film i don't know just the challenge of it was so exciting to me and i was like oh that could be really 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 interesting at the time it was starting to get a bit more talked about in the overall at least in north america i feel wedding industry and there were a few people pushing those boundaries and we were really inspired by them um and we just you know all the fancy gear and all that so fun so cool it does i don't know i lost the spark pretty quick when i was just thinking about gear but every time i came back to story i was like oh right this is why i like doing what i'm doing right. even doing we do a lot of commercial work commercial work's great um but sometimes i finish a project i'm like this was cool but i'm not nearly as fulfilled as i am with creating a story about real people so i guess just wow. storytelling just it's got a hold on me i guess <laughs> yeah no and i and i think you're right like there is uh, even to us too like there's so much purpose in being able to tell a story and a story that is imprinted in our couple's lives. Um, yeah. I think that's a huge deal, right? Like you write, like there's so much purpose and like fulfillment in being able to say, I was able 
or I was part of creating that for our couples. Yeah. Right. Like that sticks with me. I, cause I can remember every single film, every single name, uh, from our weddings for that reason, but I've done commercial stuff, but I can't tell you exactly what I've done until I look at it. Right. Yeah. Um, so 100%. it's a huge deal. And I love that. Um, cool, so man. with having rising action and like climax and like all of these things within a story, how can someone take those points and like those moments and apply them on the wedding film? Cause like those can be a little bit tricky. Um, if you really think about it, right. Cause you're, you, you said it, everyone ends up together. Um, right. and like, what's the surprise, right? Like, there, but there is still, that should still be a surprise to the couple themselves, even though they know it happened and all of that. Uh, so yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit on like, what does that look like for a wedding film specifically? Totally. Yeah. So with the ending being already known, I think it comes down to narrative. I think it comes down to how you're telling the story because even like traditional Hollywood movies where we know the ending, it's going to likely be a happy ending unless you're watching a, you know, Oscar bait or something. Um, <laughs> so we, I'd rather dive into character. Character to me is the most compelling thing. Who are these people? You know, weddings are full of things and things are awesome and things say stuff about people, but the more you dive into your characters, your couple, and maybe there are more characters, but uh, for the, your specific film, but the more you dive into people, the more unique it becomes and the more compelling it becomes. Um, so you can, you know, storytelling isn't necessarily painting by numbers, all those things like rising action, climax, three act structure, all very important. Um, but they're just the foundation. Um, you kind of got to let, learn those elements, let them affect you. And then, kind of subconsciously let that affect how you're putting a film together. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to perfectly put into words, but sure. uh, yeah. Yeah, no. And I totally get that. And I, th th that's the reason I asked, cause it is hard <laughs> to just put it into words. Like I was like, man, they've got it. They, I'm, I know. No, but, <laughs> um, I, I, no, I but think got, <laughs> sorry. I, I just you know, thought of one other thing. I think a big part of it too can come to how to apply it. A big part of it is in the getting or the before process, the pre-production process. Um, getting to know your couples obviously is so important, and we all should do mm -hmm. it, and we should do a better job at it. But if you are going into a wedding day armed with the knowledge of maybe you thought ahead and like, oh, okay, what what do I think my my central characters will do in this moment, and how can I shoot that moment to enhance it, and think about that ahead of time and have the plan instead of we can all get caught up in the trap. Life gets busy you know, it's Friday, it's we're getting all our gear ready. And like, Oh, I haven't really prepared, but I'll be fine. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I normally do. I'll be fine in this situation. If you put a little bit of thought into it ahead of time, when it comes to the edit, it'll have, it'll just be so much clear how the story should come together and kind of watching that footage back, letting and let it, letting it inform you um, mm -hmm. and how the story should kind of unfold. It can just be so much stronger knowing, okay, this moment, the first look is very important to this couple. I know that because I've talked with them and they've expressed that. How can I shoot that knowing that this will likely be a climactic moment in their film? Or, oh, you cool. know what, it's not that important. Maybe I'll, you know, apply my focus here. Knowing that stuff ahead of time is a huge good, or a huge good, a huge first step <laughs> in uh, creating a good story. Uh, I love that. And I've seen how you guys are putting that together in your own films. Like, Thanks, I watch dude. your films and you can tell, like, they just come naturally and organic like and they have purpose like every single clip and i will say this i love how um there's clips that are shaky and that's okay yeah. like i love that i because it <laughs> helps enhance the story and i much rather have a some shake on a clip than to have the most beautiful most gorgeous elegant clip I mean, it, it'll mean nothing to me after i watch it 100%. But I'll remember these little like things where it's like, yeah, we're moving and we're running with a couple and we're going right after them. And like those moments like really speak to me when I watch your guys' film and you guys are killing Thanks, it with dude. that. dude. That's cool and, to uh, hear you say that. Because yeah, we're man, big believers in content over technique and per se. Or per yeah. Se. And yeah. I, <laughs> I love that. Like what are some things, because I've gotten caught up in, it doesn't, it's, it's shaky. And I think we all do it. 
like oh my gosh like totally. it's just it's a terrible like i have beautiful film like beautiful clip 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 and it's like uh i don't know the color is not right or it's a little bit shaky or it's yep. you know dealing with that can be so frustrating sometimes um and then that can lead you into some creative blocks yeah uh how like how, what are some pointers that you guys do in order to like just deal with some of that whether that's in the edit or personally like stepping away from the edit like what do you guys do i personally like you said like it can be such a it's like a crippling thing when you get so hyper specific on your own work and you're really dialing it trying to critique every little element right. of your own work the best thing i can say is lean into those things when you instead of trying to resist it and change it and fix it you know do as good of a job as you can on the shoot day and in the edit but if something is speaking to you and something is, you know, maybe not technically real or technically perfect, um, just <laughs> lean into it because it's so much more real and says so much right. more. People, I feel like we are all kind of desensitized these days to really beautiful footage. It's achievable. It used to be so much more interesting because it was it was hard to do. You'd have mm -hmm. to like even to get shallow depth of field like 10 years ago or maybe a bit more was such a hard thing to achieve. You couldn't really, to get a camera with interchangeable lenses was expensive and difficult. <laughs> now we all have it. We can right. all do it. It's not special anymore. It's cool yeah. and it's important and it's a great tool, but I find it much more, more compelling watching a wedding film and seeing something that isn't perfect because it makes it mm. feel more real. Um, an example of that, we shot a film this past year. It was the, like the rainiest, worst day ever. Um, it was like a monsoon here in Vancouver. Um, oh and the couple were planning an outdoor first look and they were set on the certain property that meant a lot to them. Um, and they were like, you know what, rain or shine, we're going to do it. They were nice. They were so chill. So they were, they were game, which was great. Um, but anyway, the first looks happening. It was a wonderful moment, but it was very difficult for me to shoot. Um, I had a zoom lens on, which, um, I don't usually use zooms, but in this case I was because I knew I wasn't going to be able to swap lenses very quickly or efficiently with all this rain excuse me and i uh mid mid first look i was like you know what i have to i have to punch in and right when i punched in something cool was happening and i was like darn it that stinks but all right <laughs> um uh, but in the film i ended up i remember in the edit being like oh that's that's too bad this is a really cool moment i just left it in it made it so much more interesting i thought i tried to embrace it lean into it a bit added some like a little film flash it made it seem so much more dare I say documentarian, like it really was like, Oh, right. this is a real moment because it was a down moment in the film. It kind of chilled out for a second and it was just focusing in on this exchange. Um, and I don't know, I just think it can be so much more powerful than perfect shot after perfect shot after perfect shot. Right. And you see that like in documentaries, which this is what it really is. It's a documentary of the day, like uh, told in a, in a different perspective and like having just the, that little zoom, like I, I could see how that's interesting. And there's Aaron. Hey, what is up? Aaron decided Hi. to pop in. I can't hear nice. anything. Can you hear her? She, I got my AirPods. I can. In. I can hear her. I have yeah. one. I can't hear. Sure. Did you know that? Well, Maybe we can share AirPods. <laughs> yeah. Hello. How can are you? Hey, I am good. It's so good to see you. You too. It's been a minute. Oh my gosh, it has been a minute. <laughs> Where is you your wife? About? And all your she children. is out. She's outside with all the kids because if not, they will be, make all kinds of noise. He's just he was playing the drums earlier, and I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> I can't have that. that no, matter. but it's so good to see you. Um, you too. Yeah, we're we're just like hitting on some story stuff. Um, and I oh, honestly I would story. love to get. Yes, I would love to get your perspective on some of these things too. Ooh, um, yeah. What do you think? Right. So, uh, nice. and we just got we just got done with. Um, talking about like just shaky footage on a film like mm. how do you guys like how do you approach that Embracing personally yeah well i mean this is gonna maybe sound silly i'm i'm, I'm glad we went that direction <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know i just i it's such an unpredictable like event that you you can't be as prepared as you want like in a dream world we've always wanted to shoot a wedding film completely locked off shots all of our shots locked off like that'd be so cool and different and there are people that we know that do that kind of look and that's impressive it is it's it's amazing mm -hmm. i think it's maybe a lot more 
maybe planning and that's not really what we like for the experience of our couples but so I think if you just kind of like you plan as much as you can you do as much as you can in advance and then and then on the day you do just kind of have to embrace certain moments and I used to get so like sick to my stomach stressed out if like a photographer was in one of my shots or like I don't know somebody yeah. sh- shot their phone out in my way and I'm like well, what up? there's nothing you could do about it and so I think too like people feel and know like oh I was at a wedding it's like a regular like this is what a wedding is and so they they kind of feel that feeling while they're watching it anyways because it's realistic and real yeah I think it can add to it ultimately yeah I think it can be um we were talking before you arrived that like perfect shot after perfect shot is Mm -hmm. sort of at this point a little bit less interesting to me I agree. than something where you can see the humanity of it within mm-hmm. how it's shot. Yeah. Well, it's more of a documentary vibe anyways, I guess. Than and that is, that a... thankfully serves our brand. Like that's the style we are drawn to. There are people that are much more, you know, traditional, lots of gimbal, more mm-hmm. very, very steady shot. Right. Hard, it's harder to uh, hide it in that. Well, since you went handheld, sure. it makes it a lot easier. It's like, it is, it is on purpose. And so when things are shaky or it's, it's okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, oops, sorry. I totally just bumped my mic. Um, but <laughs> I've, and, and I was, I, I got into that mindset for such a, like the beginning period of our like business was I've got to have a gimbal. Oh my gosh. I've got to have steady shots. Right. Does it have like, um, Ibis in the camera? Like I need that. Right. <laughs> and like at this point now I'm, I'm, I've gotten to the point where it's like, I'm wearing a strap with two cameras, just handheld. Like that's oh, all nice. I'm doing. That's awesome. And it's, and it creates this like feeling of like, just like little movement. It's like, Oh, there's somebody there. Like somebody was capturing that. And it feels real. Yeah. Like as if you were watching it on somebody's phone, like if you're watching somebody like on their phone, you see all that little shake, but it feels real. Cause like, you know, that it was happening, you know, that it, it was real and it was authentic. I think that's a, that's yeah. one of the biggest things like being authentic to the day is such an important thing and you're right like there's people that have a different style um, that might not fit that specifically and they might just like discard a clip that has a little bit of shake or isn't perfectly lit or whatever yeah um i love love the fact that there's filmmakers and videographers like you guys that are using these kinds of shots and creating stories that are real, that are emotional and so authentic um, to your couples. Thanks, man. That's cool to hear. Yeah, we, I don't know. I think I grew up being so drawn to films that were shot on something like 16 millimeter and, or even super eight and skate videos would incorporate that, which I loved when I was younger. Well, I do now still. Um, and that's, that really <laughs> exudes that home, home video vibe is there that home movie uh, vibe is all that shaky filmic look. So right. if you can kind of um, mimic that, yeah. it can be really, it can add to the story. So I'll go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to, uh, so I know you understand, like I totally get the whole skate video thing. Cause like, that's how I started. No Dude. way! Let's I did. I really what? did. So don't you both play drums too? I play I play too? I play acoustic and piano. But his son plays. Or his kids music. play drums. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> my, well, my kids try to play drums. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, get it true. Yes. No, but I I started. Um, and it's, actually, I didn't start, but I I got into just. I love skateboarding. I love watching videos. Like I used to watch every skate video there was. Dude, me um, too. <laughs> like all the battles with um, Ronnie Mullen and all oh, of that. Oh, like, on day one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched, <laughs> and I was just like every every weekend and every time every like day I got home from school, I would watch something, yes. and like that really me inspired too. me to just hey, like the what they're doing is not perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. And the yeah. focal length that they're using is like, <laughs> it's wild. It, yeah. But it creates like, it, it enhances like what the actual like talent is doing with any kind of tricks or whatever. Right. So yeah. like, I that's how I started. And like seeing that and taking what I saw from that. In, and I don't take everything that I saw from that in the wedding <laughs> film. But I use the, and and <laughs> right, but I, but I, I use the like, just the real like raw like uh, how do i say this like the feeling of what's happening like 
the emotion of like, hey, like this guy's coming. I can feel it. And then I can see it, right? Like all of these things. I love that. So I totally understand all of that to say, I totally get it. <laughs> I'm the same way. We should have a skate chat after <laughs> this. We're just diving we, into our we, favorite we, skate videos. <laughs> there's not many people I can have that kind of chat Dude. with. Dude. <laughs> I, yeah, I will. I won't shut up about it. I'll leave you guys. Like, <laughs> I'll leave. So oh my gosh. <laughs> no, no, no. I want. You you can stay. I I love love having you guys here. Um, yeah. So that, again, with story, like all of these points that you, that you guys have hit on are so so real. Um, That's cool, man. It's such a broad think, topic. Sorry. Yeah. It, it, no, it re- yeah, and it really is. Um, we could go into so many different like rabbit holes on what a story look like. Like, how do you apply it to this film? What about if I'm like a luxury wedding filmmaker or okay. what if I am doing, um, you know, just high end uh, another thing. And this is just a quick point. Like you can still do high end on your own market. Uh, oh it God. doesn't high end doesn't mean elegant, big weddings. High end can mean 12, $13,000 weddings mm-hmm. are adventurous. Elopement, hundred yeah, percent, um, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think like having that like mindset of, oh, well, if I want to be high end, I have to shoot this way. Yeah, this um, ballroom. Yeah, appealing right. to that, you know, princess vibe. But there are a lot of people who have a lot of money who are have really good taste. taste. Also, like I, they, For you sure. know, they're. Yeah, they, we talk about it a lot these days. Do we? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've had that conversation. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we've had that conversation. Got, got him. <laughs> Like, I don't know what's happening. So, so oh my gosh. We've had that co- that conversation though. Like uh, maybe it feels like that way where we are, but with um, you know, the millennial age getting yeah. to the age where they're yeah, we're getting up married. There. Love it. <laughs> and Gen Z now too. I don't know, they have opinions, they have taste, they're not just doing what maybe their parents are telling them to do. Yeah, they're or they're likely putting their some of their own money, if not all of their own money, into their own wedding. <laughs> and um yeah. they have opinions and taste, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and want to do something different almost, I don't want to say to spite their parents, but like... like To be contrarian. Yeah, like, oh, my parents want me <laughs> yes. to do it this way. I mean, that's what I did for our wedding. I was like, hard path, mom, if this is what you want, we're doing that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, yeah, you're right. Like, so many people now are just like, how can we make it different? Because, like, the traditional was... Or at least the traditional has been like, oh, well, I've got to watch hours of footage. And it's like that became the mindset of, oh, this is what a videographer does, like a wedding videographer. Like, But now people are starting to see, oh, no, there's story behind this. Uh, like there's so much emotion. And and it's like, oh, it's traditional. There's emotion. How can we put a twist on it? And like these, these younger kids are just like wild. And I love it. <laughs> I think it's awesome because like they want to do crazy things. Like they want to go and like try these weird ideas right or rehearsal yeah. demos are, that are just like wild and yeah I, nothing's I off that. limits <laughs> yeah. right exactly and we we encourage that we're like listen if there's an idea that you guys want to do like we're gonna go for it because it's only gonna add to yeah. your film like it's gonna add to the emotion it's gonna add to the whole experience i think that's a big one like we we talk about the wedding film as a whole mm-hmm. but the wedding experience as a whole it's like what can what can happen a few days before, months before, like engagement sessions, uh, bring that into the story, like yeah. uh, rehearsal dinners, speeches and stuff like that. What about yeah. after the wedding? Like, what if they want to do like some kind of like session after? Yeah. Um, right. I think That's a good point moments... too. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. I was uh, like, hey, what you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's such a huge story opportunity too, because if a couple is open and willing and wants to, um, do some shooting after the wedding. It doesn't necessarily just have to be B-roll time. Like it can be, why not, you know, throw them a question or two about how they're feeling. And that can inform the film from the wedding day. You have the benefit of jumping in time. So why not? Well, I'm glad we do that. No, because for a long time we were so like, no, it has to be exactly the way that it was. And we can't ask mm. any questions and it has to come out a hundred percent naturally. And I think as much as we like that feeling and that vibe, Calm down. Like well, <laughs> well, and we still <laughs> nat- <laughs> natural is still, of course, like our yes. Uh, that's a focus, but it's we're not going to ignore the fact that we have cameras. We're not going to mm-hmm. ignore the fact that we're hanging out with them for the day, or we're not going to yeah hide anything. We're going to be really mm-hmm. honest. Um, 
And so, yeah, if it comes to doing some more shooting before or after the wedding, there's, I don't know, there's no rules. You can, you can improve your story even at that phase um, or at that moment in the experience. Yeah. I know that there's no rules. <laughs> yeah for sure how do you guys add some of that stuff into your film like i know you said the narrative happens and you guys kind of like uh use some of that footage maybe to add to those moments yeah. but um i know i've gotten in the like i've shot uh, rehearsal dinners and like engagement sessions and it's like well what i what do i do with all of this like maybe the couple didn't or like um speeches didn't have anything to do with it or maybe um the couple had there was nothing that i could that i felt that added to the story yeah I, 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 what yeah what do you guys do with stuff like that on that's a different i'm sorry, I'm sorry i hear woodrow oh, I'm, I'm sorry he's in school downstairs i will try and come back again if you're, i'm sorry I'll be back. <laughs> i love it Aaron will be in i get it <laughs> yeah i made siri go siri started talking sorry um yeah so adding those elements so for us, it's tricky. We don't do a whole lot of shooting before. At least it's pretty rare that we'll do like an engagement type session. Um, but again, I think it comes down to planning, but also purpose. I don't necessarily want to shoot extra footage that just for the sake of it. Um, if a rehearsal dinner means something and something happens that's going to add to the story, then I'd love to include it. But I don't want to just force something in if it's not working. For sure. um, so I find more often than not... Um, stuff that is provided by the couple can add more than what I could necessarily shoot. Um, so for example, that actually that rainy wedding that I was discussing earlier, they were a couple from Toronto. So the East of Canada, really far from us. Um, and they actually, because COVID hit, they decided, Hey, we're going to have an elopement in the park a year before our actual wedding with our whole family and everything. So they're getting legally married, just their, you know, just their parents and uh, witnesses. They filmed it on Zoom, or they didn't film it. They recorded it on Zoom um, and live stream friends, like close friends and family. And um, so after the wedding, it was touched on, I remember during the ceremony, and I was thinking, hey, this would be really cool if I could mm -hmm. take some of that ugly, ugly footage, <laughs> like so <laughs> yeah. pixely and, um, you know, delay, and you got the Zoom names of everything. Like, it's not pretty at all. But why not incorporate that in and uh, add something to the story, add an extra dimension and be able to play with time. Like th that stuff was shot a year in advance um, without any intent other than just showing people what happened who couldn't be there live. Added so much to the story. Um, so as long as it has a purpose, I don't think there's, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything that says you can't, uh, do that kind of stuff, add that kind of footage into the wedding. Wow. Oh, and I love that you guys aren't scared to add yeah. footage or like zoom footage, like you just said, um, <laughs> how, how do you guys approach that to the couple as far as being able to use that and letting them know like, Hey, like we're going to make it work. Like yeah. you can trust us, you know, cause a, <laughs> lot of a lot of times it's like, Oh, but it's like, it doesn't look good. Or I don't, I don't know if it sounds good. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I try not to make any promises. I just go off the like, hey, we have an idea. Like, will you enter or entertain us with this idea? Let us try something. Would you mind sending it? It might work. It might not. But we have an idea. And already at that point, I usually have a pretty good idea that it's going to work. Um, right. But I just don't want to make any promises. We're just going to try it. Um, and the old like, you know, maybe five years ago, I would have been like, but we didn't shoot it. So that isn't um, <laughs> as honest or they're not necessarily, they didn't pay for us to do that. So like we, they are getting a raw deal because we didn't shoot this. And I started throwing that out the window just because it doesn't matter. The couple are paying right. you because they want to feel a certain way when they watch what you create for them. And if you mm -hmm. can enhance that by set your ego aside, add something that you didn't shoot, it'll make it so much more compelling as long as it has purpose. I've even gone right. as far as like just showing just like Instagram, like straight up screenshots of Instagram images um, because it was right for the story. And it and that takes up like for a five minute film, if that takes up 10 seconds, that's a significant amount of time. Um, Absolutely. And, but I don't know if you set your ego aside, it can, yeah, it can make it cooler. So I, as far as getting couples on board, generally speaking with our couples, it's 
not an issue. They're usually like, yeah, cool. Here you go. It's more just, we don't want to bother them. So sometimes we'll try and message a family member instead, but um, to give it a surprise, but it's generally not too difficult to bring up. No, I love that. I had, um, we had a couple who was just super sweet. They had so much fun on the wedding day and we actually got referred from a couple that we shot a few years back and uh-huh. and like they were really close friends they lived in charlotte um to like close to each other mm. and well, the one of the fr- like the friend who referred us to her was she wasn't able to come to the wedding um because she was having a baby and we so we had that connection and we actually like we reached out and was like hey like is there anything like could you give some kind of speech or something would you be comfortable Ooh, with that yeah and she did and she oh did, amazing she sent us the speech and we put it on the film dude it was like i was excited i was like oh That's my awesome. gosh i cannot wait to show but it added so much value even though it was phone footage and even though it was just like the audio was like a little bit choppy and weird like it added so much value like she texted us back she's like oh my gosh i love this like i love that you guys added that That's um awesome. but there there's and, and I think that's how like you can create moments and things that really tell a story, but you can also, you gotta be careful because you can also trash some oh, 100%. parts of the story. <laughs> uh, like if it's like, if it's just something that's like super elegant and you try to put in something like that and it's just like super bad, like unless you can make it look like stylish, yes. you know, like, you know, then, then it might work, but it could also not work at some points. Yeah. And you have to be um, self-aware to be, <laughs> to be able to, make that call of, you know what, this isn't working. Don't try and shoehorn it in if it, if it's not fit. Yeah, for sure. I love that. What are, um, what are three things that people can be doing now? Like that might be essential to, Hey, just getting back on track on actual storytelling over, Mm. over, Hey, I'm shooting 4k or, Hey, I need film green or, you know, what are three things that you can you would say, hey, these are essential to storytelling that you can follow and it'll actually start to create uh, results within your films as far as story goes? Nice. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, off the top of my head, I think uh, the first thing I would say is intention. Behind it, We have so many choices throughout the filmmaking process through pre-production, production, and post-production. Just ask yourself, why are you doing x why are you using that lens for this moment why like is it just convenient because you have a little extra reach and you can shoot far away that's okay but ask why not ask yourself can i do a different lens that'll evoke a different feeling that will enhance this or same goes for camera movement same goes for positioning so just intention through the whole shooting process uh as well as editing and of course pre-production um motivation considering motivation um like why is your camera moving a certain way that's similar to intention, but the motivation of a camera move can bring the scene to life. And rather than just shaky for shaky sake or dolly for or gimbal shot for gimbal sake, if you uh, have motivation behind it, like a reason that the, like imagining that the screen or the camera lens is the eyes of the viewer, why are you making their eyes move that way? Mm. What is your motivation for that? Um, third, what can people be doing right now to focus on story? I would say maybe try challenging yourself, stripping it away a bit. Why not? Hey, I have, why not just throw a prime lens on, maybe a, a, a versatile prime lens, try and shoot, maybe not necessarily a paid job, but try and go out there and shoot something for story's sake, with as little gear as possible. Um, and that you'll be surprised at how much you can do with one lens with, and how much more creative freedom you'll have with less mm-hmm. options. And more isn't always more. And I want to add a bonus one. Um, try in the post-production phase, try editing by audio only. Like literally oh, plan out that. your story without watching your B-roll. Just listen to your like the selected story bits that you've narrowed down. And try just like plan out your edit without even watching it. I think you'll be surprised at how much you can, um, how important story is from an audio perspective before visuals even come into the picture. Mm. I love that. Those are amazing. And I love what you said with the audio thing. Like 
I've been able to in our films like we we go through the audio first like well yeah. multicams and then audio but like we we mark moments and times where it's like oh this is what they said and this That's is what they so said good. here and it might be important because then like we can just tie it back oh the group member I'd say this that can tie back to over here and just being to like being able to know like hey that's there visualizing yes. it whether it's on paper or whether it's marking it whatever you have to do like being able to see that creates so much story and then we can go into a totally different conversation on audio and how that supports a lot of story with yeah. um on a film but yeah that's all huge that, all that <laughs> to say man that yeah those are incredible and thank you for sharing all of that um no problem yeah so I want to talk really quick um, with about McLean and Aaron. Like they have a course. We right? do. You do. Yes. They have a it's, course coming out. We've been teasing it for a while. And I've, I've signed up for it. I, like I signed up to, for the <laughs> email letter. I was like, I need to know when this is coming. Thanks, buddy. Um, so I'm super excited for that, um, especially from you guys. Like, no. I, I've said it. I've already said that a couple of times. You guys are like storytellers, like for real. Like you guys are storytellers. I think that's Thanks. what you guys do. How, that's how I would define you guys. So tell us a little bit about um, what what's what are you guys releasing? What can people expect in the course? And um, when can people expect it as well? Totally. Yeah. So this course, um, is, the primary focus of it is demystifying story. Um, we like we were talking about earlier so like it's a word that's thrown around all the time a whole lot of people don't know what it necessarily means and there are kind of multiple interpretations of it and and so we want to focus on what are the building blocks of story what makes up a story and how does that apply to wedding films so we've put together i think it's around uh 30ish 30 or so videos maybe a bit more um diving into all things story through every stage of the process um, through pre-production, production, post-production. And we even have a, an, a section on, we call it pre-pre-production, um, talking more about marketing yourself before you even get a client. Um, but all of that condensed into about a three or so hour uh, online course that we're going to be releasing hopefully in uh, about a month and a half in early May. I love that. Man, yeah. I am so excited. I really can't wait. Um, yeah, cool. There's... There's so much to learn from you guys. Um, and if whoever's listening, if you guys are not following Hello Tomorrow, Mac and Aaron, you need to do so. They are putting out inspiring films, um, like captivating films uh, and just really like raw and authentic emotion with everything that they put. Like, I love how they use um, just every moment and every piece of the film to like add a story. And I think uh, a lot of people should be doing more of that. And I just, I honestly just don't think that people know how. Um, so being able to learn like, hey, this is how we tell story, right? Um, I think that's going to be awesome. But cool, other than that, man, thank you so much for hopping on. Uh, I cannot wait to see what you guys do. I can't wait to support uh, the course that you guys are coming out with and see how Appreciate many people it. actually get help from that. So uh, thanks again. Uh, and to all of those that are watching or listening, thanks for uh, tuning in. And we will see you guys on the next one.